uh, as we get into down and distance situations. So, for example, these first two days are really P and, T, P and 10, meaning you're just dialing up, you know, every play that is not even a, a down and distance play. Um, practice three, we start to get into some second down. Um, practice four and five, you start to see a little bit of third down situations. Um, and, and when we get into that sixth day, you, you'll start to see a little bit more third down and long where now you can start to see some, some play calling that, that is going to be situated for you know, the quarterbacks. So it's not going to be until that second kind of rack, if you will, that second week where we start to you know, pin some plays on quarterbacks. Chessa Boucher with NBC33. Yeah. Aside from Kayshawn Boutte, you have that loaded wide out room. Is there anybody that kind of you're expecting to have a breakout fall camp? Um, I, you know, I, I, I'm not just saying this, but to, to be positive, but, you know, I'm t Thomas, Neighbors, you know, Hilton, you know, I'd like to see them all, you know, continue to develop because they are young receivers. Um, those would be the guys in particular. Um, you know, Jenkins has showed some, some things in spring that we'd like to see him continue to, to you know, progress in the manner that he has. Um, all those guys are talented, but I, but I really think more than anything else, it's the consistency that we want to see from those guys, that, that they do it play in and play out and, and actually practice in and practice out. So consistency and performance is really what we're looking for with that group. If we get that, It'll be a dynamic group. Uh, yeah, Brian, are, are there any players who, uh, I guess, who can't go full speed in practice right now or can't take part in drills? And also, uh, Trey Bradford's status, didn't see him on the roster. Yeah, Trey is, has been um, separated from um, the university, and that's, you know, um, you know there are Buckley, um, uh, uh, you know, laws that I can't get into some specifics there, but he is no longer on the roster. Um, as it relates to um, practice, um, uh, Besh is limited. Um, he's coming back. Uh, you know, I think he's making the progress necessary um, from shin splints, and, and I think he'll be you know available for us in the next couple of days. But he's really the only one that that has the kind of limitations. Um, uh, I think Tolan, you know, had the disectomy. Uh, he's making great progress. Those would be the two guys that are kind of on a pitch count, if you will, if that's, you know, um, if I can use that phraseology in terms of they're coming along, but they're, they're not quite there yet, but they've made pretty good progress. Hey, Coach Kelly, Glenn West with Go247. Just um, Jarek Bernard Converse, we saw him out there, I think, for the first time since he's joined the program. Just update, I guess, on his status and just um, – how important it is for the secondary, particularly that cornerbacks group, to kind of develop some cohesiveness in these first several weeks of camp? Yeah, you know, if, if I have my notes in front of me, it's it's one of the things I talked about in our, our you know offensive and defensive staff meetings. Um, you know, probably two or three times about trying to gain some continuity at the cornerback position. So getting him back, getting him out here, he's been a great leader for us, um, and you know we're anxious to see what he can do. Um, you know, obviously had a great career at Oklahoma State. Uh, we expect that to continue here. I had a good summer. Um, he's healthy. Um, and he's played a lot of football. So the expectations are that he's going to impact uh, what we do. Uh, but now I think the big thing here is, is to gain some continuity at that, you know, that position. And, and that's why we went into the transfer portal and feel very fortunate to have him. Hey, Coach. Bree Andrews, LSU Tiger TV. Um, with the with John Emery being able to come back this season, Armani Goodman be able to come back. How would you describe you know the depth in the running back room and how that's really come together? And is there anybody there that's really stood out to you? Not yet. I mean, you know, they're all going to have a great chance. You know, um, you know to contribute. You know, I, I really like the depth of the of the group. You know, you had you know Kane to that mix as well, um, and and I, I think. You know, all of them have a chance to contribute, much like we saw in the spring game where we had a lot of guys contribute. I think that that's going to be probably what happens here this year, and and I'm okay with that. I think that's great. I mean, I think all of them um, are very competitive and all bring a little bit something different to the table. Um, 
but but all will contribute in some fashion. Brody Miller with the athletic. You know, Martinez, Dellinger, two guys who, excuse me, who've kind of cross trained a good bit. I guess where are they kind of mainly focusing on right now in the line, and where could they be? Using yeah, them? that's a good question. You know, we're, <laughs> you know, I was, uh, Brad and I were kind of you know, having a conversation about it even during practice because there's a lot of moving parts there with, you know, Dellinger's at guard. We want to see him at center a little bit. You saw Frazier at guard uh, with Bradford, but, you know, Frazier could play tackle as well. And, and so we've paired them up on the right side because we think that they're interchangeable. Um, you know, we like the, you know, the fact that Bradford's got really good feet, but, you know, Frazier's got some length. Um, so long story short, um, as it relates to the specifics of your question, um, those guys are you're going to be center guard combinations right now. But I, I think it's important that there's some flexibility here for the first two, two and a half weeks. And, and we'll build, you know, the, the starting five and then, you know, finding, you know, finding the, the, the rotation, you know, where you have – you know, your tackles solidified, um, the center position, and then I think we've got some really good depth, you know, that's building in this unit. But I think it's going to take a little while for it to, to kind of pan out over the next couple of weeks. Hey, Coach. Uh, Jace Lejeune from Great Iron Football. I know you signed a really talented transfer for Portal class. Talk about just trying to get those guys accumulated to the program and also getting the veterans their reps as well. Yeah, so we kind of went through that in, in the spring because most of those guys were here um, as it relates to the transfer portal. So um, they assimilated very well. The, they fit in very well, and, and they got a lot of work in the spring and then had a really good summer. So um, I, I would say that that in itself um, has kind of already played itself out, and, and they've immersed themselves into the program and ha are seen now as, as one, uh, you know, in terms of the program themselves. So, um, yeah, you know, whether it's a wide receiver or whether it's a running back, I mean, you know, obviously Kane is new to the program. But other than that, um, everybody has kind of assimilated quite well back into the program. Hey, Coach, of the guys who weren't here this spring, I'm kind of curious who sort of stepped up today and, and it seems like they, they were here during the spring even though they weren't. Um, you know, I, I don't know that there was anybody that um, particularly, you know, we hadn't seen seven before, seven banks, you know, obviously who's out here today in a limited, a little bit of a limited fashion. Um, but, you know, obviously, uh, you know, having Perkins out here today, you know, you get a flash and see him. Um, I was over watching tackling drills, and, you know, he's got a suddenness to him, you know, that's quite different <laughs> than some of the other players. Um, so, I, you know, I think there's a couple of players that, that kind of flash at you. Um, you, know, I, I, you know, I like the way Bordelon moves around, you know, athletic. Um, you know, he's, he's a big strapping kid that, that moves well. Um, Emery, um, the local kid from Catholic, Emery Jones, he's a big physical kid too. So those guys kind of jump out at you a little bit that they're, they look more than just, you know, the, the typical, you know, freshman coming in. These guys are physically um, mature and, and handle themselves, you know, very well. Okay, over here, uh, Brett Martell with the AP out of New Orleans. Um, could you compare maybe relative to, you know, longer stretches in your career where you had um, relative, you know, coaching staff and roster stability, just how you feel about the amount of decisions that a mostly new staff here has to make about a roster with a lot of new players between now and week one? It's a good question. Um, and, and, and I think, I think it's been um, answered by uh, the way these questions have been posed as to whether it's the offensive line, which I said, I think, be patient, the quarterback position, the cornerback position. Um, I, I think that those, those three critical areas, right, you know, corners, um, offensive line, and quarterback, um, 
you know, a lot of good and bad things happen in those units, and there's questions that have to be answered. Now, I stand here in front of you feeling pretty good about the players that we've put together in a very short order that can go out and play at a high level in the SEC, but the fact of the matter remains, we've we got to figure out who those guys are. And so we're going to go through camp and, and um, you know, have to make some tough decisions and, and quite frankly, rely on um, evaluations in camp um, to do that, and that's a little bit different in my years. Generally, we've, we've had guys kind of, you know, everyone says the depth chart, it's always open, but, you know, you always have a, a guy penciled in somewhere. There's not a lot of penciling in yet. Um, so, yes, to, to your questions, there's some work to be done. Coach, uh, Leah Van, the advocate. Um, Traditionally, the number 18 has been very special to this team. Um, are you looking to continue that tradition, and when do you hope to find a player to wear that jersey number? Yeah, I think the tradition is real um, and, and needs to continue. Um, I've talked to the team about it. They believe in it as well. It's, uh, you know, we believe that that, that number represents uh, somebody that uh, brings all the traits um, every day. If seven is the most talented player from the state of Louisiana, we think that, that 18 is the one that brings all those traits that, that come to um, that, that player that leads in, in, a, in an extraordinary manner. Um, you know, the attention to detail, um, you know, just a great focus, uh, represent your program in a positive way, both in the classroom and the community, you know, on the field. Um, and, and so that, that's kind of what 18, you know, means, and, and it's important. And so um, we're, we're going to award it um, to uh, a deserving player. Um, we're just not going to do that today. But it's coming. Stay tuned. I think you guys will show up. Thank you. Appreciate it.